podcast where two bearded film fans watch the 50 best horror movies ever and then we talk about them. My name is Luke Condor with a K and I'm joined by Mr. Mr. Ben Errington. Mr. Ben Errington. How's it going, Mr. Ben Errington? It's very well, Mr. Luke Condor. How the devil are you? Pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. I think I've got my water. Cat's left like an apple core on the desk here. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you can just gnaw on that while I'm talking at yeah. uh, any point. I've got nothing to eat here. Well, actually, I do have some soft multivitamins, Bassets, but for adults. You can suckle on one of those if you're feeling a bit uh, Ras- dry. Raspberry and pomegranate. Nice. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to suckle on one right now. Good, good. You can't stop me. I'm going to suckle on this apple core. So, yeah, apologies for the missing episode last week. We were a tad busy. Um, we don't really talk about this much, but me and Ben like to make stuff. And um, it's a comic book that we launched. If you want to check it out, go to hawkandcleaver.com um, and check out the comic section. Uh, the comic is called El Marvo, and it's out. And that's why we weren't here last week. So, sorry about that. But, slacking. Um, slacking. I know, yeah. So, Last, oh, actually, I do just want to quickly mention um, Andy Conduit Turner, if I can pronounce his name right, uh, Andy CT, uh, made a little piece of like grading software. He's, he's like a magician with numbers and he whizzed together, uh, like summoned this software, <laughs> software that's all. Sum- yeah. Summoned the software. <laughs> yeah, he did a summon. And um, so me and Ben have not been keeping track of like how, what we've been grading these films. And Andy has, yeah. apparently. <laughs> And he sort of worked it out so we can see what the average rating is, what my average rating is, what Ben's is, what uh, um, what our worst film is, what our best film is. Um, yeah. So Compare, compare, we've got the ratings for Rotten Tomatoes and IMDb on there as well, so we can see where yeah. we kind of fall in the yeah. average. So I will tell you, I am more positive <laughs> than Ben, but my, <laughs> my, my average grade is a B, and uh, Ben's is a, a B minus. So we're pretty much on the same so same level. Do you know what the uh, the our favorite film has been yet? Which is weird because I don't feel like this is, but it's probably just because it, we were both feeling this one. Uh, what was our favorite? Yeah, uh, I think I know this. I think I've already looked. Was it Poltergeist? It is Poltergeist. That was our favorite, our combined favorite. What was our combined least favorite? Oh, combined least favorite. Yeah. Uh... I think it's two a draw. Two that are a draw. Is, yeah. is it The Devil Rides Out and One, <laughs> yeah, one of the Draculas? Right. No. Uh, so oh, it's, yeah. It's, uh, well, it's Bride of Frankenstein and the 1931 Dracula, which is weird because I preferred that one to the Hammer one. That's strange. Yeah, I preferred the Be- Bella Lugosi one. Did I just, did I just hammer you, it? <laughs> you, tanked, so you tanked it. You dragged it into the, into the deep. Okay. Yeah, so you're so you're more positive, but only just about. See, if if you were like B and I came out as average in C, yeah, yeah. I think I'd be like there are issues, but I'm only I'm only on a B minus. So yeah. despite I'm the like, fact that I'm uh, clearly the glass is half full, you're like not quite. <laughs> this glass is full of piss. Yeah, not not quite. Oh, half full. It. Okay, uh, so last week we did a Don't Look Now, which has still been still. I mean, two weeks ago we did Don't Look Now, it's still been on my mind. I still think it is a great film. I really enjoyed that one. Uh, Have this... you been walking down the street and seen any children in a, t- in a little I've red seen mac? Seen children, yeah. I think there's, <laughs> they're just there's quite a few of them in the world. I see yeah, them all the time. Yeah. Have, have uh, you seen Have you seen anyone like turned one around to see if it's you, you know? Turned a lot around. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone any I see children? now, if any of them are facing the wrong way, I like to flip them around just to make sure that they're not like a midget of a cleaver. Oh, you're... Yeah, a midget with a cleaver. Oh, this this one is. What yeah. what percentage is there? What percentage are they a small person with a cleaver? Twenty five percent. And the parents, <laughs> uh, are, are normally the ones that are the other seventy five percent. The parents are a little bit miffed that I'm spinning their children around to ask if yeah. they're a dwarf. To be fair, if they're just miffed, that's yeah. you're doing all right. If they're yeah. just miffed, happens, you know, miffed happens like, more often than you think. A lot of parents are like, oh, oh yeah, okay, yeah, I understand. I do it too. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. A lot of <laughs> them are like, now, eh? <laughs> yeah. A lot of them are like Nicholas Rogue, <laughs> classic. <laughs> classic, classic. Yeah. High five, high five. Yeah. <laughs> Restoring them churches, man. Woo. Okay, so, <laughs> um, this week we are doing number thirty-two on the list. We have nearly done twenty. Um, what a cool project this has been! So we've this today we're talking about let the right one in, 
uh, the 2008 original. And uh, do you want to tell us a bit about it? Yes, indeed. Okay, so Let the Right One In is a 2008 Swedish romantic horror film directed by Thomas Alfredson, based on the 2004 novel of the same name, um, by John Alsvid Lindqvist. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty good. good that's pretty job. good. I think yeah, yeah. Um, I've got that book as well, actually. Just yeah, I think I, I think I read it, but a while ago. Um, the film tells the story of a bullied twelve-year-old boy who develops a friendship with a vampire in Blackerberg, a suburb of Stockholm, in the early nineteen eighties. I didn't quite get that this film was a nineteen eighties set film. No, um, let's ignore that because I've got some trivia based on it. But uh, I thought it was like sixties sort of a. Did you? Yeah, because like, the, the TVs are like maybe I think maybe seventies actually, like early mid seventies. I thought maybe like, uh, God, because this was two thousand eight. I thought maybe like early two thousands or something. I uh, don't know. Yeah, but they had like if you look at the fashion. Did you just think those back backward Swedish people? <laughs> live, those bloody live backward in, like, Swedish people the with their CRT fashion. TVs and their obviously flares. they're thirty years. <laughs> Forty years behind us. I yeah. don't know. I just thought because it was quite like a, as we say, it's a suburb of Stockholm. I thought it was just like a, yeah. just sort of a, a, a quiet are, area of, of Stockholm. That you were thinking. <laughs> <laughs> the third world with their TVs and <laughs> Rubik's cubes. Yeah. Oh yeah, the Rubik's cube. That's quite a big giveaway. So. I just thought it was, yeah. a, it, was a, it was a throwback, you know. Oh uh, yeah. I can't, okay. You can never yeah. believe it. I thought, didn't want, one of them had a fidget spinner. Definitely. One of them had a fidget spinner. They're yeah. bang up to date. Yeah. One of them had Pogs, and everyone had Pokemon <laughs> cards. It was confusing for me. Yeah. I was like, where the hell is this film set? Football stickers. I don't know what you mean. Okay, um, so this is what the, the smart people over at Empire have to say. Uh, we all know children are terrifying. That is true, as we've discussed this already. <laughs> but let the right one in take spooky kids and made them almost too relatable for comfort. Simply trying to survive like countless vampires before her, Ellie strikes up a bittersweet friendship with a social pariah, Oscar. Offering him salvation for his from his less than ideal home situation. It's based on the I'm gonna give it a go. John Ajvida Lindquist's bestseller is set in Stockholm. It's not just a threat of being offed by a vampire that makes this an incredibly effective Scandi scare fest, um, with themes of loneliness, anxiety and alcoholism, helping it slip effort, helping it slip effortlessly into your bloodstream. It's no surprise Hollywood clamoured for a remake. This has got ninety eight percent fresh on rotten tomatoes. Guess what he got on IMDb? <laughs> Whenever you ask me that, I can't. I don't know what to do. Uh, Seven point six. Eight. It's got the. This, oh. So you know it's a fucking great film. If yeah. it got eight. Um, I mean, if it's got seven point eight, that's just that's that's next level. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so yeah, uh, our Facebook group guys, uh, Andy uh, said. Uh, I don't know. I asked him something. I've just got Andy said same here. The remake was a great movie in its own right but have not seen the original. Michael Mayunda said the original is really good. Both versions are great. If you like the remake, you'll most likely really like the original. Uh, Tommy Draper said, I've not seen all of the remake, but love the original. Um, have you seen the remake? Uh, yeah, yeah, I have seen the remake. Um, just the once. It's directed by um, oh, the, dude who's, the dude who does like World of the Planet of the Apes and he's going to do the new Batman. Matt Reeves, yeah. possibly? That's right. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that must have been one of his early films. I don't know if he did anything before that. I think it's good. I think it's a solid remake. Obviously, I think it's because the level of the actors you got involved. So you got Chloe Moretz and is it that Asa Butterfield? Is it him? Maybe it's someone who looks like him. There's a couple remember. of kids. He's got like milky, face, couple... milky skin. I don't know what you mean. Milky skin, <laughs> yeah. semi skimmed. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So I think it's the level. The actors are really good in that. So that kind of carried it a little bit. But Did, have you a, seen this one before watching this this time? Y- yes, so you've seen I have. Both. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'd seen. I saw this before I saw the remake, and then this is the. I think this is the first time I've gone back to this since watching the remake. And you've read the book potentially. And I, I'm I'm pretty sure I've read the book. It's yeah. it's on my sh- it's on my shelf. I can see it, and it's got like wow. the spine. The spine looks um used. Yeah. The spine looks spine folded. Spina bifida. So either I looked through it quite rigorously or I actually read it. Yeah. I bought the book good. for my sister for a Christmas present. I haven't read it myself. Uh, I've only seen the remake um, a few years ago and I remember thinking, yeah, it's was, it was quite good, but for whatever reason it didn't like resonate with me. Uh, it, I just thought it was a good film. This time I watched it and I was like, wow. 
<laughs> that's a good film. Like it just, yeah. I don't, I don't know if I'm just watching this at the right time. You know, you can never step through the same river twice and all that. But I just found this one, watching it this time, I was like enthralled. Like I just, I was. Oh. You know, the last time, the last film on this list that has had me this way was The Skin I Live In. When I was just watching it, completely. Oh, yeah. Completely invested and just completely sucked into the story. Totally there. Yeah. There are loads. There are loads. There are loads of bits in this film that I kind of had to re rewind and like rewatch. Yeah. Because I think there's a lot of subtle moments that you don't necessarily. You kind of you kind of think, oh, was did I just see this? And then you kind of like have to go back and watch it again. A few weird moments like this that made my skin crawl. There's uh, the get, stuff in this one that, that isn't in the in the remake that I really liked in this version, like the cats. And some yeah. other bits, like not in, not in the remake. Bloody and, cats! And I like. I, I I can't remember the remake massively well. Yeah. In order to make a direct comparison, but it might be a good one to go and watch again. Yeah. Seeing as I know it's not a pile of doo Yeah. What are your what are your impressions of this one? Your overall initial. Um. Smell I mean, this it? film. This film's amazing. I think there's everything. Everything that comes with it. The vibe. The kind of just just that uneasy feel. I mean, like the ro- the romance elements are like are like fine, aren't they? Like, because I always find in like films like this, in like horror films or films that are a bit when the romance sort of happens, especially between the two main characters, yeah, it can feel a little bit like I, I don't really care about the romance. I kind of would rather just feel. But the way this is presented, the romance is presented is so innocent. Yeah, yeah. That it is it is that the innocent side to what is essentially a very very dark story, and I think those two those two sides bounce off each other very well the yeah. light in the dark um and you know it is a very you know what i mean it's a very creepy film yeah and you know it's got bullies in it who uh <laughs> it's got, got some bullies, bullies yeah. which you can really like go oh i'm gonna have you like a proper flick knife as well at the end proper, proper little bully it. bastard yeah. and these bullies you know they get a comeuppance which is which is fantastic in any film yeah i think but, one of the reasons uh, uh, this film works so well is the the, the kid who plays oscar is really uh, you can't help but kind of want him to win something, <laughs> like get like a just a yeah. little win in there. Even when he like he batters that guy, that kid in the head, I was like, well done. <laughs> and like with a, with a long with a, with a long whippy stick. Yeah, uh, like a cane. Or um, something. Also, this film is like a lot of what you don't see um, that kind of you do kind of works well. A lot of stuff sort of happens in the shadows, or a lot of stuff happens like, off screen, where you kind of just see the reactions of other people, or you see like the than something else sort of what happens afterwards and i think that's really well that's done really sparingly yeah. and it's uh, it, it, the film knows when to show you something and when not to show you it yeah and i think yeah. that's good because you don't feel like you don't feel like the gore is overdone like when you see blood in this film i feel like it's really like the color palette of the film when you see blood and it looks really like black yeah and yeah. it kind of it kind of like it, it's really quite shocking most of the time when you see when you see someone sort of like bleeding, that's the thing. Even though there is a lot of gore, it ends up on someone's face or whatever. You don't always see like the the like someone's neck getting getting ripped out or something. Apparently, you don't the see remake it. was uh, a lot more gory, and I don't really remember. But apparently, the remake took the goriness to the next level. Yeah, I don't think I remember either. No, I don't remember. Um, but I'm just, I'm just gonna double check the the actor in a. In fact, I think it was eight. I think it was Asa Butterfield. But yeah, so that was 2010. So it was only two years late. Two years later, they decided to wow. repeat that. That's quick. That's for them to say, we want to do this and then do it so quickly. Yeah, the actor is that Cody Smith McPhee, the one right. from The Road. Yeah. Um. Yeah. He, I always milky get him skin. and yeah. Mil, oh, milky skin. I always get him and Asa Butterfield mixed up because they have got similar. Have you made some? Asa but- <laughs> No, Asa Butterfield is the actor who is in the film Hugo. And he's a lead in Ender's Game. Well, one of the leads. Oh, uh, okay. All pretty awful. But if you if you looked at these guys side by side, you'd go, they're similar milky face, <laughs> milky floppy hair, face, children. Blue eyes. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, as I said, the the actors. But, I mean, that's not to say the actors in this. I mean, the actors in this film are great as well. They there's some, great, there's yeah. some like, they've, they've cast they've cast um, Eli really well. As she's like... Um, Real otherworldly, strange. Well, so uh, there's a few times when I was watching it with a cat, and uh, we like, looked at each other and like saying, "Is there some sort of special effects going on over her face?" Because I'm sure her face like seems to morph every now and again. Like, this is so, this is some of the stuff I needed to rewind. Yeah. So it seems that when she's either just about to feed, her face like looks a bit old, almost like 
So yeah. we're assuming, as she's a vampire, we're assuming that she's a certain, that she's pretty old. We don't know if she's hundreds of years old or just like a few decades. Yeah. But when she's like hungry, it kind of like lets, shows the tr- true sort of age. Her eyes through. seem to like get that sort of golem quality. It seems to like grow yeah, yeah. and bulge. And, yeah. And yeah. then it'll cut away and it'll cut back and it's like, but it's, it's, so, she's got a different it's face. so subtle when you think, um, did I see that? Or, yeah. It's like, it's, it's really nicely done. Um, so should we cool. get into the story? Uh, yeah, should we talk about the major players? The major players. So Cara Hedebrandt is plays uh, Oscar, who's a sort of um, weedy, down on his look kid, uh, with like a blonde mullet. Um, he's kind of weird. <laughs> um, <laughs> blonde mullet. <laughs> he's got like a hair helmet, hasn't he? He has. Yeah. He's, he's got, got a got classic a hair helmet. Yeah. Classic Swedish blonde helmet. Lena Leanderson uh, plays Ellie or Eli. Um, is it Ellie? I, I was reading it as Ellie on the subtitles, but uh, I was reading it as Eli. Okay. But... <laughs> um, so she uh, is the the sort of next door neighbor vampire girl, uh, the girl next door who eats people. Uh, she's kind of spooky. Could be super ancient. We have no idea really. She's got this like. Uh, um, in the in the plot later on, there's like an egg. She's got an egg on the table. Apparently, it's worth a lot of money. Very yeah. nice Fabergé sort of egg. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I like yeah, that's a, something you something you're reading out in the initial stage of this review. Yeah. Uh, you know, she's a vampire girl. She lives next door to someone. She's that's got an throw, egg. Such a throwaway moment as well. <laughs> such a throwaway yeah. moment. But well, we're going to make this integral to the review. She a has a Fabergé egg. Don't forget that because that yeah. is going to come up again later. Let's remember it. Okay, so I've not got the other She's... cast members written down, but there's the mum, Oscar's mum, who we barely see, and I think that's like part of how that works. There is dad. There's his dad, who we barely see. There's a group of bullies at the school. Um, there's like three or four of them, and one's yeah. got a big brother. Uh, I, I should know the, <laughs> the, the cast members for this, but I haven't got it written down. Um, but don't worry about and it. Just trust and me. Then e- in, e- in Eli's got like Eli's got like a carer slash Hacken. His name is Hacken. Pronounced, yeah. He, he was good, yeah. Now, so do you recognise his? Do you recognise her father, or do you think that's a uh, some sort well, of uh, familiar? Like, no, I don't. I don't. Rec- I don't recognise her father. I reckon that's too easy, um, for it to be her father. I reckon it was. So I, I reckon, taken away from this film, he was once someone like Oscar. Yeah, I, I was getting the same vibe. And, well. and, and yeah. another little boy, maybe at some point, and obviously they've fallen, yeah, in love or whatever at some point. But then he's grown and she hasn't, so they've had to keep moving around. Um, the country, and he sort of goes out and gets her a lovely bit of blood from the <laughs> local qu- yeah. from the local spa. Yeah, got your pint of blood, Eli. Oh, <laughs> so, um, so we start. I think there's some the various scenes to sort of set up Oscar and how like meek he is. Uh, the the where they live, uh, it's like a little like a council estate sort of thing. There's some like council flats. Um, yeah. There's like a whole little community of of. Uh, adults there who are all sort of failures in one way or another there's like a drunk guy i mean there's two drunk guys um there's a woman who's, who sleeps around there's a guy who's just stays inside with all his cats um, why would you say she sleeps around does she not sleep around that's the vibe i got did you just get the vibe from her or was it confirmed because if you're just judging people based but, on ben... <laughs> i don't know why i thought that maybe do uh, you sleep around or something i'm just trying to have a quiet beer here please mate yeah um and then so uh, so Oscar's like, and he also get he goes to school. It's a pretty boring looking standard school. Uh, uh, backwards Ben might say, but <laughs> with the the way that the old backwards school backwards and set in two thousand and one <laughs> or something, you know? Yeah, not the eighties. Um, so and we we oh yeah so so we pretty much open with him looking out the window. He's like naked for some reason. He's a bit of a weird kid. <laughs> Like he stares. This is his favorite pastime. He stares. It he is a bit of a weird there. kid. However, yeah. we have definitely all done that before. Stood looking at our reflection naked. Finger in your belly button. Just having a look. I really wonder where you're gonna go with that. And then, <laughs> and then uh, someone looks up and you just have to wave because what else can you do? If you if you <laughs> if you walk away at that point, it is confirmed that you were staring at him. So it's like that moment when you're walking pa- when you when I'm walking past a car and there's like like a parked car mm. and I'll think oh I'll just check my hair out in that uh, <laughs> in that reflection and then your eyes focus and there's just someone in there looking back at you. 
<laughs> like, what are you doing? And I just go, good day. That doesn't happen <laughs> to me much anymore with the, with the hair situation. The hair me, 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 me neither, Luke, but maybe I'm just like, re- re- like I'm adjusting my hat. Maybe it's like, <laughs> right, the wind's yeah. taking it off. Yeah. I'm adjusting my hat or, or, or the eyebrows. You can, uh, you can check the eyebrows now and again. I need to. I need to start doing that because some of these uh, hairs are, are trying to escape my face. They're yeah. like reaching Some, out. Sometimes I'll be like driving or something, and there'll be like a eyebrow hair hanging down like that, and it's it's ever so it's ever so annoying. It's trying to trying to make you crash. <laughs> it's become possessed. Possessed eyebrow hair. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Os- Os- Oscar. Yeah. I mean, he's 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 flexing in in the in the reflection of himself, and he, I mean, he's just. He's try- He's almost. He's practicing almost what he's gonna say yeah. to a bully at school. Like this. This is him. This is him doing his taxi driver moment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Basically, you know, going, I'm hard, and you don't like want to mess you? with me. Talking to me. Talking to me. Yeah. Because uh, he doesn't see anyone else here. Yeah. And... Um, <laughs> so he. Uh, th- th- that's him when he's looking out at the neighbors and stuff, and uh, um, we just get an idea that he's he's sort of outside. Well, he's inside looking out at, at, at people, at the adults, and there's a sense that he's just an outsider. Um, and then at school, he gets bullied. Uh, uh, they call him a pig. I noticed that they kept like the bullies kept calling him a pig, and like I figured maybe that's something there. Like maybe that it's something to do with him being food, of which the, all the others like are essentially food for vampires. Um, Oscar, he's also got a knife. And he likes to stab trees, and he has like a, a newspaper cutout collection. He, he's sort of very interested in. Um, serial killers and he's got like uh, various collections of, of them and he's sort of uh, interestingly mm. enough Stephen King used to do that as well he used to have like a serial killer uh, cutout collection he was very interested oh, really? so maybe Oscar just wants to write scary books who knows he just, want, he just wants to be old old Steve doesn't he yeah uh, so one night Oscar is out stabbing a tree as per usual and um, he's I think he's calling it like a dick or something <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a dick, you tree. I'm just stood here, mate. I'm just, like trying, sc- I'm just trying to be a tree over here. Have it. Squeal for me. I think he's basically taking out his frustration on the bullies at school, on this poor defenseless tree. Um, yeah. And then we get our first introduction to Ellie or Eli. Um, and she's sort of watching him from the top of this climbing frame. Um, what did you think of the introduction to her? Yeah, it's pretty good because obviously it was snowing and it was it was we we're made to see it's winter, but she's just chilling in her gym jams. Bare, bare uh, feet as well, yeah. Bare, bare feet as well, and obviously yeah. she she says that she's moved into an apartment next door with an older man. Uh, oh, yeah. Weird. Uh, and then doesn't she say to Oscar that they can't be friends? Like they have a little chat, and then she goes, "Yeah, we can't be friend. We can't be friends, mate." I'll be like, "Oh, big head." She kind of floats uh, floats down as well. she's on top of the climbing frame, and Oscar talks to her, and she just sort of glides down to immediately I'm thinking if I was Oscar I'd be like that's a vampire like immediately <laughs> you're a vampire you yeah. are well Jesus give me a chance yeah. I'm not a chat yet um, so and then he the thing, the, is this when he shows her the Rubik's Cube he's like saying this is me this is my little toy would you like to play with my little toy I think they have I think they have a few a few okay. sort of interactions though. we see a few in- interactions and one of the interactions she, he shows her the yeah. Bang the brand new up to the minute hip thing for kids to have. Yeah, it's a Rubik's cube, the original fidget spinner. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she sort of tells him how to do it as well, doesn't she? Or does he tell her how to do it? Uh, he well, he shows her how the game works, but then she goes and like finishes it. Um, she said it's easy. That does my don't people do that? Oh look, I'll show you how to yeah. do this. Oh, oh no, they're an expert, are they? Oh great, <laughs> wish I never showed you now. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's my game. <laughs> <laughs> this is my football I'm taking it home yeah. oh um, for god's sake and then so we, I think we introduced a Hacken who's her like a, the older man who lives with him uh, lived with her he's kind of an odd guy he likes to sit and read newspapers um, we don't really know what their relationship is I think mean, that's part of the sort of what makes no. it quite interesting um, yeah so at what point do we realise that he's feeding her or i think there's uh, i think there's a few more scenes okay. where we see where we see sort of there's one where eli sort of asks oscar about a cut he's got on his cheek and he says and obviously that he's being bullied by classmates yeah she sort of says he's got to start standing up for himself then yeah. we start seeing him doing a little bit of a little bit of weight training yeah. pumping iron we get to see his, his uh, montage his training montage which lasts just one scene 
So we can <laughs> just, see that it's a training a montage of one shot. <laughs> just one <laughs> one scene montage, yeah. what? What's the uh, rep? Yeah. One one rep and then everyone goes bloody ass you've done enough. Done. I usually yeah. think that I think once you've done one rep, you've got to think that's probably enough. He looks a bit young to be doing weight training. I thought it stunted your growth if you did it before puberty. Did it? Wow. Well, yeah. I didn't know, I didn't know that. That's interesting. Yeah. I didn't I didn't <laughs> Maybe maybe that's true, I don't know. I think I've just made it up. Such a bloody growth mate, yeah. does what? Um yeah, and I think it's around this around this point right. we sort of see that Hakan he goes out around um what, what what's the name of the area again? What's in Stockholm and Black, Black he, he get, Brook or something, I don't know. Yeah, but he, he's like he looks like he's in a park area, but it looks like it's quite busy because there's a lot of people running past and stuff. Yeah. Um and then doesn't someone doesn't someone come up come what? up to him so he asked him the time or something? Well, yeah, so he uh, some random guy comes up to ask him for the time or something like that, and then he, um, ah uh, yeah, sprays him in the face or something. He's got some sort of thing that goes over their face, like yeah, uh, some sort of gas. He's got like a whole little tool. Uh, he's got like a, yeah. a gas mask type of job. So he's I mean, he's like probably a, like a, he's yeah. probably like an expert at this. He probably when he started doing it, he didn't do that, and yeah. now he re- he's got these methods which are like taking people out with minimal fuss, minimal sort of dis- disruption, yeah. uh, not not alerting people nearby. Yeah. And then he gets this guy and and hangs him upside down Strings from a tree. Up. And the, the idea is he's going to um, stick him like a pig. I, I kept seeing that sort of whole thing coming into it. Uh, so he's yeah. going to bleed him out. Um, and I think he gets so far, but then some passes by are walking the dogs or something. Oh yeah, real, real annoying, real annoying dog just comes over, doesn't it? Doesn't, doesn't, yeah. doesn't fuck off. <laughs> just like, <laughs> fuck what, off. what could you do in that situation though? I, I would never condone kicking a dog, but I think if I think, I think if, if kicked it, it would just bark and it would just. Uh, yeah, maybe. I'm not, as I said, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not condoning kicking a dog. Yeah. I'm just saying, this guy who's just killed a man, I mean, yeah. if he's ki- if he's killed a man, why stop there? Why not give the dog a kick? I, I don't know if I'd... I, I would pick up, <laughs> I know a, you pick would. up a pick up a stick. Oh, yeah, good idea. And throw it. Easy. Yeah, I wouldn't kick, I wouldn't kick it, Luke. Come on. <laughs> not, not all dogs uh, respond that way. Some dogs will just look at you like you're a twat if you're trying to throw them a stick. If you try and boot it. Yeah. 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 I'm obsessed with kicking it. Sorry. Uh, okay, so yeah, so basically he's foiled, um, and then these people they find the strung up body, and it becomes a big thing in the town and the newspapers. Who killed this guy in such like a, a weird sort of way? Um, I really liked the whole idea of him going out and hunting in this, and just how practical yeah. and like I don't think we really see a familiar go out and trying to bleed out a human to to get all the blood and stuff. It's quite an interesting take. Yeah. He was pretty good at it as well. I thought. I thought like it definitely spoke of someone who was. We never saw him succeed. I don't think, but he was pretty good at it. <laughs> we ne- we never saw him succeed, but he was good at it. You know, that's yeah. That's just proof right there. <laughs> he must be it's a bloody it dog. But then uh, he goes back to, to Eli. He says, "Look, McDonald's," because he hasn't <laughs> like just eat like Chinese because uh, he's not done just his eat they come to your house they do Deliveroo <laughs> Deliveroo yeah. you could del- get every- anything delivered to your house and she's just like not interested and then she, oh, her, her belly like grumbles really loud like mine does when I've not eaten like uh, she like, you, she like yours does when you've not had any blood <laughs> yeah uh, so then she goes out and uh, she makes a right mess makes a right mess of this guy called Jock who is one of the key people who live in that that area, uh, I think he'd been just been saying good night to one of the other guys, Lack, Lackey or Lack. Um, they're all they're all like a little clique, aren't they? Like in the in the estates. Yeah, um, there's a little clique, but then there's like a recluse dude, who we, we understand was probably a part of this clique at one point. Yeah, uh, and his name's Gosta, and he sees the attack from his flat, and he comes out of his flat for the first time in bloody ages. Yeah. Now he's been locked up there for a while, and he comes out to sort of tell all his mates. I just seen Jock get bloody attacked. Oh, I don't keep doing this accent. I just seen Jock get attacked by a by a thing by a is child. That you, is thing. that your Swedish accent you're doing there? I'm doing Swedish accent. Yeah. Yeah. All the Swedes come round and they're like bloody heck. <laughs> I don't even know what it is. Uh. So. <laughs> Okay, uh, so, and then Hacken says, okay, I've got to go hide this body now because someone's going to Hacken. find it. Hacken, they, these all sound like Street Fighter characters. I know they do. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hacken goes out and he he, he, uh, he throws, again, This the way they do this is all a massive struggle. It's not like he's just easily doing this. It's like He has to carry the body somewhere to find the lake to sort of throw it into. 
Um, and then, yeah. as far as so, I know, that the, the body's sort of safely dealt with for now. It sounds um, like a lot of effort being a, a yeah. vampire's familiar, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, it's I've like you can't just you, you can't just chill out and be a vampire's familiar. Oh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna retire and become yeah. a vampire's familiar and have a nice chilled out time. You're bloody exerting yourself constantly every single day. You're yeah. doing a mur- you're doing a murder. Yeah. You're collecting all this blood. I mean, it's just he it's just too been, much. He could have just been sat at home playing PS4, and yeah. then and then what's the name? Get, Eli get part- rocks up and says, oh, "I made a mess outside. Can you?" And he's like, oh, "Fuck it, hell!" <laughs> yeah. I was in it. I was near. I nearly platinum trophied Uncharted 2. Then yeah. and I now got to come out wait, and so do this. Wait, point. wait, what year is it setting again? <laughs> I'm lost. <laughs> I've just been playing the N. I just been playing the N sixty four. No, that's nineties. Gallagher or something. Uh, Space of it. Pong. I've just been playing Pong. I'm two nil up. <laughs> I'm two nil up on Pong, and there's no also save feature. Oh, I'll just die, will I? Can you remember when there was no save feature? I remember like the, the first time I saw games that could save were the football games, and they sort of saved characters uh, that you'd made and stuff like that. I was amazed at it. Um, okay. And then, so I think Hacken gets another shot at it soon. He goes to uh, like a school or like a place where they train students to be people. Yeah, I've, I have just, I have just realised we, we have said that he's good at this, but then every time he does try to kill fails, someone, get some blood, yeah. he fails real badly. But then he's, he's been doing all right so far. Yeah, it's just, it's just this new area they've moved to. So, you know? do, I mean, so do, do you think we should say um, Hacken asked? Uh, Eli not to hang around with Oscar Uh, and then he goes on this hunt and he packs um, like a little jar of what looks like urine but isn't um, in his little little bag I was thinking at this point just in case he gets thirsty you know yeah (laughs) but uh, I I feel like part of this is like I think he's sort of realised that uh, she's moving on to someone new at this point and he's sort of getting ready to finish his so she's moving on. He's so so bad at it now. He's like she's moving on to guys with better hair. Yeah, she's gone to blondes. Now. Yeah, she's blondes have more fun. They say, and she's yeah. like, well, that's it. Let's find. But yeah, it looks like he's yeah. taking this little jar, this little clear jar. This is his like yeah. his out or his, you know, things go wrong. Yeah. If shit hits the fan, he's got this little jar yeah. of something. So he goes to this. Uh, school. He, he basically gets a kid, not a kid. He's like a, a young adult. He looks about 18 or something. Strings him up in the lockers. Uh, but then the guy's friends turn up in the lockers and he has to hide. He's, he's basically fluffed it up again. He knows, <laughs> he knows he's going to get caught. So he takes his, his finger of what what I thought was piss, pours it over his face, and uh, we find Strings. out it was actually acid. Um, yeah. I think the idea is so that the police don't recognise him or don't... Yeah, trace. I think the idea is the police don't recognise him, but when we see him, it only looks like half of his face. It's a full-on two-face is... reveal. I was like, yeah. sure they use that scene in The Dark Knight. Yeah, um, but I'm sure he pours it over the whole of his face, so when the, we, we see him with half a face. Yeah. Also, if they if they don't want to uh, recognise him, the police just got hold up a mirror to his face, and they're like, oh, shoe hack Shit, Just yeah. moved in, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. Just moved in. Yeah. I thought it, I thought it was RV. Oh, it was old RV Dent then, yeah. didn't I? Yeah. yeah. The, what do you yeah, think so... of like, the effects of the acid face? I it was Again, pretty good. it was pretty good, but it's a bit OTT in it. It's one of those things. It's, it's the same with Two Face in 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 uh, the Dark Knight. You're like, there'd be a bandage on that, surely. <laughs> it's just so. Yeah. I, I know. I know. Harvey Dent has like some gauze on his face, and at some point it comes off. But it just looks like such an open wound and like mouth hanging off, and that you'd think. Yeah. That wouldn't just be out, letting the air and the bacteria eat it away. That's a good point. But, I mean, maybe it's just been just been cleaned or something. He's he's getting ready for. A... They have to like have regular baths, don't they? For, for oh, and stuff. God. If if, if I was gonna yeah. if I was gonna do something like that to my face, you'd just be like, end it, end it all. Yeah. Well, yeah. um, what's the name? Uh, so basically, he ends up in hospital, but I think he's kind of arrested for bit hanging people upside down. You're the guy who hangs people upside down <laughs> for some reason. Yeah. You're that guy, aren't you? Yeah, you're Are you upside there? down. <laughs> you bloody perv. Yeah. Did you? Didn't you cut one of their throats as well? Nah. No. It might be someone else in my name, but it wasn't me. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like me, but it's like this, but twice. You know, it's but twice, and yeah. I'm just this, but once. Yeah. So you know, that's not me. Fucking say it's not me. Yeah. Uh, so he's like, uh, he's sort of in prison hospital. Eli rocks up and then um, I think they kind of say goodbye. Um, I think uh, I think they sort of know what's going to happen. Did she let us? She undoes his handcuffs or something. She kind of lets him out. 
Yeah, she undoes his handcuffs, does she not? And then she, I think so. Yeah, she cl- she climbs up to the window, um, and then sits on the window ledge, and he and he comes out and uh, jumps out. Lets, yeah. Well, no, he lets he lets her feed on him, doesn't he? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So he feeds. He just goes. This blood ain't gonna be going to waste, love. Yeah. Yeah. And then he's like, have I, you, I failed. Have you fail? Yeah. And he falls out, smacks his head pretty hard on the. On the shed, bin. on the shed, or <laughs> on the <whatever>. shed, <laughs> on the bin shed, that's out there. Yeah, yeah I like that. I, I like, I like the, I like the people falling uh, effect. Yeah, it's or good. whether it's just, it's just people smacking their bonts on the older, uh, yeah, on the old shed. You know, that's that was good. I was like, ooh, his face has been half chloroform, chloroform <laughs> sulfuric acid. Yeah, <laughs> and then he's just gone and whacked it on a shed. You know, I mean, he's in a bad way. <laughs> he's dead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah. So then uh, Eli goes to ask, Eli's now all alone now in her apartment. Um, just a little girl in I think the big we're town. Alone. Yeah. yeah, she goes to yeah, see Oscar. There's, there's a musical number at this point, isn't there? Oh, they're a different film. <laughs> uh. Uh, so she goes to, to see Oscar. I think Oscar says, "Do you want to go out with me or go steady or whatever the Swedish sort of version of that is?" Yeah. And then do you want to go steady? She says, "He goes, do you want, I don't want to go steady. What? What? I've only had one beer. What are you saying? You're yeah. saying?" Oh, <laughs> Go steady tonight. It's just a quiet one. Oh, I've only had one beer. I'll do what I want. And he was like, uh, "I'm not. I'm not a girl." At which point, I thought it meant no, I'm human. But realised, like she's like, well, I think we find out. We confirmed this later on, but she's not actually a girl. She's a boy, uh, or was a boy. What? Yeah, because she's been like, <laughs> we'll get we'll get more into it. Um, but uh, did I miss this? Yeah, I think you did. Uh, and I missed it as well. And well, oh, I sort of, sort of thought, so, what is that? And then, um, like, reading the notes about it, and then um, realizing that oh, that was actually intention of the film. Like, she's she's actually a boy, like an androgynous boy, okay, uh, who's been like castrated at some point. We'll, uh, we'll let's get to let's get to this. If you yeah, confirm yeah. when we confirm when this is revealed, because maybe that passed me by somehow. Okay, so um, Oscar's like, look, I don't care if you're a girl. <laughs> I'm easy. And then uh, I think they're. I'm easy, mate. At that point, uh, so come anyway, on. It's, it's a nine and eight. Is it's a nine and eight? Is for God's sake. Yeah. You can't you can't tell what's going on. Yeah. Who uh, cares? They go ice skating. Uh, so Oscar, they go like a little school trip to ice skating. The body that Hacken, oh, he's messed it up again, hasn't he? Hacken. Uh, the body's there in the ice. They find it at the same time. Uh, the bullies are like telling Oscar to go for a swim or something, uh, but he picks up. I don't even know what it is. Like a red. Cane. He picks up a really long, thin whippy stick. You say that the like kind... that's a thing. This is <laughs> <laughs> like one of his little sti- standard whippy stick. <laughs> <laughs> just one of them standard whippy sticks, Luke. <laughs> you, you never had one growing up? Go ahead. It's just one of those sticks you like see out and about, and you pick it up, and it's like it's not big enough to throw. It's just like long and thin, like a twig, and you just use it as a whip, and you whip the back of someone's legs uh, in a pl- in a playful okay, way, not okay. in a. Well, so. Um... The, the the main bully guy it's a snooker uh, cue actually isn't it is it, oh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I have no idea yeah okay so um, Oscar like stands up for himself whacks the guy in the ear uh, yeah it, like, well they say it splits his ear and it looks like there's a lot of blood and stuff it's pretty I was actually rooting for Oscar as violent as that was I was still like the kids yeah. Kind of oh yeah, it, definitely. Because I mean, he's he's one of those kids. I mean, he is a bit of a bit of a douche, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. But, like he would have got done for that, poor Oscar. But he was only defending himself. There was like three of them ready to chuck him in the freezing cold water, and he's yeah. like, "Don't come near me. I've got this whippy stick." And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> have uh, it. Oscar's like uh, thinks he's the man now. Like he's he's full on riled up, and he goes, "Right, I'm going to take my new missus Eli, and then we're going to go back to this little place that I know." And then I'm going to cut each other's hands. <laughs> so he goes, and I've never, uh, I've never seen the appeal of this, where you go, you think, you cut your hand, and you go, now you cut yours, and we'll mix blood. That's it's gross to me. Yeah. Also, like of all the things you could do when there's a vampire knocking about. Oh yeah, it, yeah. Of all the things you could do, I mean, they could, they could have a hug, they could have yeah. a high five, they could do a fist bump. It's like they could do, they could a do a really complicated handshake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. loads of stuff and go look yeah. we're best buds now yeah. but no blood bond Oscar with a vampire who's hungry for yeah. god's sake it's like opening a pack of Jaffa cakes and someone's on a diet like it's the same sort of look, like 
<laughs> they were not. They, she was not happy. Like she instantly like went all vampire-y. Blood dripped on the floor. She started. And there's like imagine the Jaffa cake crumbs are on the floor. The person the die goes, <laughs> and then like starts like licking up I, the crumbs. I lost. I lost three pounds on Weight Watchers this week, <laughs> and you've just opened Jaffa cakes in front of me. You are so you don't care, do you? Well, I'm eating them now. <laughs> I'm eating them now. Oh, but is a Jaffa cake a cake or a biscuit? Oh, I don't care. I don't and care. then they hiss, and they sort of like. Well, <laughs> oh, chocolate. Off. There's chocolate stuck between their teeth. Yeah. <laughs> um. So then, uh, I think she tells him to get away. Like, oh, I'm going to kill you, or, or something like that. I don't know. Something the vampire yeah. saying. He, he sort of runs away. Or... <laughs> I think so. And th- this is this was the weird bit. The weird bit. I noticed her face was different for the first time. Yeah. It was a bit where like he it cut to him, and then it cut to her looking up from the blood she'd been looking from the floor, and she looked uh, she looked like shit. To be fair, didn't she? She's like, oh, so she's like, uh, she's now seeing like she's full on like blood lusting, right? So she's yeah. full on vampire mode. This is when I don't know why I assume this woman was like a bit of a slut. Um, the the blonde woman who <laughs> goes out with uh, Lackey or whatever his name is. She seems like a lovely, wholesome lady, um, yeah. but some for some reason Luke has decided to tar her with the slut brush. Don't know why. What, go and watch this film if you want. Make your own decision. I don't know why I thought that. I'm just. I thought for some reason like, that she slept around with like Lackey and Jockey and. She was just had a load of. She had she had male friends. That's what you had a problem with, wasn't it, Luke? She had male friends, and you so, were like, well, they cannot be male friends without it. I've just realised there's something wrong with my viewpoint of the world. Like, I must have something like, deeply wrong with me to assume that. <laughs> she appeared on screen, and you, and you just went, slut. <laughs> Lipstick. <laughs> Bloody slut. Lipstick. <laughs> Bloody tights. Yeah. Slut. What um, year is this? So she, um, unfortunately, gets nibbled in the neck by uh, Eli, who's out on the, on the hunt. She survives though because Lackey turns up and like boots her off. <laughs> Probably like yeah. just kicks her off like a like a dog who's trying to nibble at some chicken. Get off the <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you kick a dog now, so you wouldn't kick a dog earlier. <laughs> but if a dog's coming for your chicken, you're immediately kicking it. Not even a chicken, just like the chicken giblets and like the, just, the extra bits, the awful chicken, chicken gib- awful. <laughs> it's the awful. I'm seeing you in an entirely new light tonight, Luke. Yeah, kicking yeah. dogs for chicken. Slut shaming. Oh, Slut shaming. Uh, For people who Jesus. Have, yeah, yeah. No, I'm bad, our I'm our, our, li- our listenerships gonna go down or maybe even up because of your new yeah. fine badass persona. You're gonna have a leather jacket on next week, aren't you? <laughs> Why not? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna grow Oscar's mullets. Uh, it's gonna look a little bit different. I'm probably gonna oh. just grow it around the back here, though. I like that. Out there. Um, <laughs> okay, like that. so uh, she. Um, the woman, I don't even know her name, but uh, she, uh, Virginia, in, she uh, wakes up and like that. She's basically turning into a vampire. She's getting, she can't touch like the sun and stuff. Um, th- she this, can't touch the sun. <laughs> no one can there really. So it's not a big shame. No big loss. Uh, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm just trying to touch the sun. You're never gonna happen. Never gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She hates the sun. She's like, she reacts to the sun in the same way you do to. Dogs are after your chicken. Just like ah, get away! Don't like it. She reacts to the sun in the same way uh, cat reacts to the sun, and like when it, when it's in the morning, like a Sunday morning. Like, oh like, yeah, yeah. I open the curtains, you... <laughs> and he has there's, to like close them. There's, really there's a sun. There's a sunrise, like on on your like side of the house where you're sleeping. Um, yes, it does. It sets over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 horrible. I want to like just turn the old ice round. I mean, I know, I know, it'd probably be easier to just sleep in a different room, but <laughs> I want... it's so not. It's like you go to sleep all lovely and lovely and snug. Yeah. Especially if it's a little bit, little bit of a chilly night, so you're just like, oh, got a bit of blanket up to bed, and then you wake up just cooking. Yeah. Just like... You can hear, you can literally hear, like Virginia, you can hear like your skin sizzling, and you can yeah. see like the like the dust, sort of the melts of dust, sort of caught in. Like the... that. Yeah. And it's that's good. what I'm all, that's I'm breathing that all in. Yeah, I don't want to know. I don't mind them breathing that shit in, but I just don't want to know I'm breathing it in. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And then when you pull up, when you pull up the blind, and it all comes. Oh, Jesus! I, uh... It's five a.m. <laughs> What's going on? I poured myself a, a glass of like a, a mug of water the other day. It was like a black mug, and I looked in the in the water, and it was like a film of like oil on top. You know, when you get like petrol in in the water, and it has like a bit of a rainbow thing. I was yeah. like, that's weird. I can see that in this cup. So I poured the water into another mug, a white mug. I couldn't see it. So I was like, it's fine now. 
<laughs> Did you drink it? Did yeah. you drink it then? Because it's always going to be there. Like it's just yeah. it's just the way the water is. But like uh, I could see the the oil or like whatever it was. It was. Uh, all that's all that's all the little microbes that the government the fluoride. put into our yeah. the fluoride and put into our water. My pineal kill glands. Us. <laughs> oh God! Like that's uh, that's what it does, right? It creates a crust around your pineal gland. Yeah, crusty glands. Yeah, <laughs> can't be can't be helped. Okay. Yeah. So so, so, so that. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we? So, okay, so this, Virginia. So this yes. vampire slut, right? She's in the hospital. She's in the hospital, and uh, her matey boy comes in to say hello. Oh no! Wait, wait, wait we've got you the attack. The, you missed the cat, cats. Yeah. Cat attack. Yeah. This. So this scene was. I wasn't expecting this. It wasn't in the remake. Uh, no. She goes to the guy who has all the cats. She says, "I'm a bit ill," and the cats attack her. Like they're all CGI. You can tell the CGI, um, but I still kind of liked it. This yeah. kind of was, it was kind CGI, of bonkers. but it was, this bit it was CGI, but it was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, like nah. it was a bit of a random so, thing to have in the film. Like someone, someone on the on the team was like going, "Oh, so Dave, who does the CGI, he had not much to do so far, has he? He's done like Eli's he's, eyes and that. He's like, you're like a Photoshop like, action. He's got like the cat, the cat. I've he's, downloaded a new cat yeah. button. <laughs> I'll shit off at doing the cats. If you want to, if you want to, if you want to have any scene where you have got cats in it, well, we'll write that. Get the script rewrite. Yeah, cat scene. Okay. Cats yeah. attack. Slut vampire. <laughs> Tick. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so it's crazy. And, and then she goes to the hospital. Um, and I think at this point she knows she's a vampire. And she's like, I don't want to. I'm starting to get hungry for blood and stuff. And I don't want to do it. She asks. Yeah. Uh, Lackey, Lackey's there. What a name, Lackey. Um, <laughs> You're Lackey's such a Lackey. There, and then he goes outside the hospital room. And then she asks the doctor to open the blinds. And I thought this was really fucking good. Like when she bursts yeah. into flames. It yeah, cool. it, I mean, it was cool. I mean, you, you see this so much in films, vampires. I mean, we saw it in, like, 30 Days a Night, where Josh Hartnett kind of just, like, crumbles away and sort of go, goes, like, black. Yeah. Um, and sort of other people that turn into dust or turn into ash. This was so much better. Because imagine that, like, you can imagine that was... That seems so much more realistic, I know, obviously. Yeah. Vampires don't exist, allegedly. <laughs> but <laughs> but what a way for, what a way for them to sort of just... Burst into flames. I mean, that just looked. Yeah, it's good. Vis- visually, I mean, just, I love the way that that was shot as well. We kind of saw it from one angle. Yeah, it was a it was a, a, like visual, a nice wide a visual treat. A visual treat. A so a treat for, a visual treat for treat. the eyes. Yeah. And a, you and secretly you were like Jaffa cake. <laughs> secretly you were like, yes, she's dead. Yes. Damn, burn the slut. <laughs> burn the witch. Um, <laughs> poor, poor Virginia. Um, poor Virginia. I mean, bless her. She actually seemed quite relatively nice, actually, now I think about it. Quite... Yeah, she was lovely. Yeah. She was lovely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Regret. so uh, now we're getting towards the end of the film. Eli goes to uh, Oscar's flat, and she says, and he says, are you a vampire? Uh, and she says, you have to invite me in. But he doesn't actually invite her in. Doesn't he just like go like that? Like, did he have to say, come in? But she just comes in anyway, I think. Yeah, yeah. No, no. She, no, she has to say, "Come in," because she she walks in without saying he can, and then she's bleeding from her eyes. Ah, oh, that's why. Oh, I wonder what the fuck was happening there. Yeah. But I did I'll... love that scene. I was like, so this is this is amazing. So she starts like uh, bleeding from her eyes, like the paw, it has a close up on the pores of her head, and the pores are like sort of seeping blood, and then she's bleeding all over. I think that's like one of the most visually, like afterwards, especially when like she's still got the blood down her eyes and stuff. It's just visually amazing to see. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. I mean, it's quite an iconic image from the film, and when you see it, if you've seen that image before you watch the film, you're a bit like, oh, she's a vampire, so she's probably just killed yeah. someone and she's covered in blood. But for that yeah. to be the reason why she was covered in blood is pretty cool. I don't, I don't think I missed that. That's such a good way to show... Yeah. Because I wonder why he didn't actually invite her in. And I think this was the bit where she she a bit, she said that she wasn't a girl, she was a boy who'd been castrated. That's right. Well, I don't think she said oh. that. Well, uh, <laughs> so, uh, wait, so she said I'm, I'm, I'm a basically I'm a vampire and then Oscar's like a little bit upset about it He's like well that means you kill people and then she says well you like to think about killing people something along those lines of like I am a, I kill for like because to eat but you want to kill because you're a, a bastard that's like pretty much what she says um, and then and Oscar's goes, like oh well, yeah <laughs> and he gives her a right. hug and he says oh be me for a while she grabs his head and this is a weird bit for me so she grabs his head and it's, it's almost like 
there's something telepathic happening like she's he's seeing her past life or some something like that and then it cuts to her she looks like a really old woman did you did you yeah. pick up on that um and then yeah yeah and then he says okay you can go put my mum's dress on she goes in and he has a peek and then you can see she's actually like a castrated boy oh right i uh, i don't know where i zoned out during that bit or something <laughs> um but yeah, I missed that, unfortunately. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's pretty interesting. Well, I, I saw it and I was like, that looks weird. And then I didn't know that was actually what was happening until I read afterwards. And they're like, they made it out as if it was obvious that she was a boy. But I didn't pick up on it. Weird. Yeah. Yeah, pretty pretty cool little um, moment though, I guess. Yeah, like, I, 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 think the, the bleeding, I think the bleeding from the, the pores like, and the eyes, I thought that was amazing. Um, okay, so... And then we've got like uh, Lackey, who has lost everything because of Eli. Uh, he, he traces back to her apartment, but I don't remember how he did that. Yeah. But um, uh, yeah, I can't remember exactly how he did it. But yeah, you get basically find her. Apartment. Yeah, sniffs her out. Lackey is basically Batman. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then he he finds her asleep in the bath, and he's like, he's gonna kill her. Uh, and then this is an important part, I think. Uh, Oscar goes up behind Lackey with his knife. He has the opportunity to kill him or stab him, but he, yeah. he chooses not to. Um, and then she wakes up. The, probably the most brutal scene in the, in the film. She mauls Lackey. The door closes, um, and then Lackey's dead. And then I think, yeah, uh, and then Eli says, "I've got to go." Um, and then we get the idea that like th- 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 this whole end of the film I thought it was like really amazing so we get the idea that she's she's got to go and this is like the end of their their time together um, Oscar's sort of chosen Oscar had the opportunity to, to kill and he saw, he's always sort of had these fantasies about killing people but decided not to and I thought that was him making a choice not to be her familiar I thought that was him saying yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I can't actually do I can't actually kill people it's not in, not in me to do that uh, yeah. and then and that's when she decides that she's going to go um, and then he goes but then he's like I feel like it's it's him becoming sort of coming of age he goes into his house and his mum's shouting at him and he, there's all the toys toy cars on his bedroom wall and they've all got the doors open and they're not ready for travel they've got the boots open and stuff and he closes them all and he gets them all ready for travel as if like symbolically saying uh, I'm right, ready okay. to move on now uh, I'm ready to, oh. to, to leave um, my, my childhood or whatever and then and then, so we get the next scene, which is the, probably the best scene with the swimming pool scene. Yeah, this was pretty tense as well, I felt. This was pretty like, oh, yeah, God. Yeah, These like, Even whole that... bully, bully scenes, are like they always get to me. They always get to me. I was just reading Stephen King's It, and all the bully scenes in that were like more scary than the actual like killer, like, the supernatural oh, side yeah. of it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so what, what makes me go to the pool again? Well, he's just he's just at the pool in the Oscar. He's just at the pool doing his little aerobic thing, after school fitness thing, and obviously um, the brother of the kid he'd hit with the stick and destroyed yeah. his destroyed his old ear. Um, they set a fire like outside the uh, outside the place, which um, distracts the teacher. So the teacher goes outside, and then the boy comes into the the old the older brother sorry comes into the pool area where Oscar's yeah. in the pool, and uh, basically just tells him to. Uh, for, forces him underwater essentially hold his breath for three minutes yeah I mean we pretty much get the idea that it's, it's when bullying takes that step too far or it's on the verge of taking that step too far when they might actually yeah. kill him and like, well either either, either, either even either, sorry also the younger brother is sort of like come on this is probably too much even yeah, though his ear is yeah. like mangled even he's thinking but obviously the sadistic older brother and I think that sort of adds to the tension when you're thinking if even they are scared something bad is going to happen to Oscar here and this is like this is such a great way to shoot this section, where we've got Oscar underwater and all the the violence and chaos is happening above. Yeah, again, a perfect example of like the scary the scary thing is what you don't see really. Yeah, and like, you don't really know what's happening. There's that bit where like the feet get dragged <laughs> across the pool. Yeah, and then a head just falls in. And you're like, what the fuck happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that is amazing. So you yeah. just love to, I'd love to see that. Obviously. Yeah, you'd love to see it, but it'd probably look ridiculous. She obviously she can fly or something, or she like yeah, dragging exactly. him along. There's, there's some sort of supernatural craziness that like she turned into something. I, I don't know. Um, and then like uh, this is where I think it should have ended. 
So he comes out of the pool and that like she's there, she's looking at him, her eyes are big and blue and they're like staring at each other. And I feel like it, it gets to that point and then it, it's it's basically saying, look, I can't be your familiar, I can't actually kill people, but Ellie's still going to be there to look after him in, in terms yeah. of need. Yeah, and, no, then, and then exactly. it gets to like a snowy scene and then it has another scene where it has Oscar leaving with her, which I kind of feel like invalidates some of the some of the previous scenes. I feel like that should have ended there because then we've got like Oscar yeah. becoming a man He's not going to become a killer. He's not going to become a hacker. And he's not going to end that way. Um, but he's still going to value in his life in some way or another. That should be in the ending. I don't understand why they did this final scene. Yeah, and it kind of undoes it. It kind of wanted to tie it up in a nice little neat bow. Yeah. Where they'll leave it together in a happy ending. Um, so she's in a box yeah. beside him, safe in the sunlight. And, and they're sort of tap, tapping on the box. I bet it? the producer or director was like, he was worried that if he left it at that, it's a little bit of an ambiguous ending. Because they don't know if she's back for good or, or anything. So we need to have. Yeah, a, but then, but then where where are they going, and how could yeah. he leave without without his parents? So, because yeah, obviously his his mother we don't see very much, but we do we did see a few scenes of him and his father, which he seems to spend a little bit of time with. And then there's um, that weird. Yeah, we didn't talk about the father. There's his father, and then there's a weird guy who turns up every now and again, who looks it's like like a big mustache and like hair. He looks like, hey guys, like he's always like the first <laughs> one who turns yeah. up. He looks like he wants to give people a massage too often. And, like, he, and he loves having a he loves having a drink. Yeah. And then Oscar's like, bloody hell, this again. Yeah. This yeah. guy again. Yeah. But um yeah, I think that last that very last scene was a misstep. I think it should have ended because it even cuts that beautiful snow on black. So that should have been the credits. I don't understand why they yeah. did that last scene. But yeah. hey, I know what you mean. who am I? Just hey, uh, just a bit of what, what, what are you gonna do? What okay. you gotta do? What you gotta do, Luke, is just when it gets to that end of the swimming pool scene, just turn it off. Yeah, I did. Next time, I'm just gonna close my eyes. No. <laughs> Don't da, want da, to. Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah. then you open your eyes, just the credits. You go. Well, that was a great yeah. ending. <laughs> um. So, um, what did you think to the story overall? It's uh, it's pretty awesome, isn't it? Uh, I think is is a sort of like gothic love story thing. It kind of works really well, but it but as a as a sort of genuine, genuinely a uh, quite a unique vampire tale, while still sort of ticking all the boxes of the yeah. traditional stuff, I think it's great. Um, tension throughout, not always because of the vampires, or so often because of what's Oscar going to do, what are these bullies going to do to him. Yeah, uh, yeah, but I think it looks so good as well. I think just where just where it was set as well, it felt quite sort of closed off. Yeah, it's kind of perfect. Every single step was perfect, like the setting, the music, like the actors they got. Um, yeah, mm. it's done done really really well. Yeah, I might go back and read the book again actually, just to see if we see if we get any more of the story in there because obviously there are quite a few little ambiguous bits. It might be good yeah. to see if it gets cleared up. Did um, oh, that's what I was gonna say. Um, I completely blanked. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was, what I was gonna say? Okay, so oh. I'm not a vampire fan. Like, I don't. I think they're kind of cool. I guess like. I like, I like Blade as a film. Though I've never really been a big sort of vampire fan. There's only been like a couple of vampire films that have been like, oh, I can see the sort of appeal of vampires. Because some people love vampires for some strange reason. And um, that would be like 30 Days of Night because vampires and that are genuinely scary, sort of horrific mm. monster type things. And then this. And I don't know what it is. I feel like it's just genuinely sort of sort of creepy and sort of kind of a, like a gothic feel to it. Yeah. And I think this sort of made me realise... This work to me is vampire story where most of us don't. Yeah, again, I think that's because or, or I've always met, already mentioned what you don't see seems yeah. to be scary. So it's that sort of mystery, that sort of like fear of the unknown, and yeah. everything that sort of happens in the shadows that sort of is the creepy, the creepiness of this film. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's, I think it's a masterpiece, man. I think yeah, it's a masterpiece. It's really good. Um, shitty pants moments or jump scares. When a, when her face changed at any time, it, not shit your pants as such, but very very unnerving. Creeping in your pants. I was like, what's going on? <laughs> Cre- what creeping in my pants? Yeah. I was I was creeping out. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. I thought any time Ellie attacked or anything, um, it's good. There was there, I don't think there was any sort of jump scares in terms of like uh, the classic sense of it, but it it's it just it was scary enough anyway. Uh, trivia. Are you ready? Come at me, bro. Number one, uh, the film was snapped up by Hollywood and remade into a film simply called Let Me In. 
There will also be a, a sequel slated to be called I'm Stuck, Let Me Out. And then a third film is on the card. <laughs> Change my mind, let me back in. The trilogy is, of course, based around the man of all the cats who can't decide if they want to go out or not. <laughs> you, I'll, 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 I want it to be true, Luke. But yeah, me too. I, unfortunately, it's false, isn't it? I'm Stuck, Let Me Out. Must has to come out. I'm gonna let me in. <laughs> let me in. Let me back out. Open the door. They're not yeah. there. Yeah. Change my Where mind. Where are you? Change my mind. Then you come yeah. in ice and ice and they are in there. I had to get in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so number two, you were right about that. Uh, number two, let the right one in is set in Sweden in the 1960s. Let me in is set in the 1980s America. That's not true. No, it isn't. Because uh, it's false. I could have just said yeah. false, then that would have been a lot easier, wouldn't it? That's not the game true. is true or false. <laughs> Not true, not false. That's not true. That's not okay. uh, Number three, uh, several tricks were used to create the right sound effects for some of the gory scenes. Biting into sausages was used to replicate biting into skin and flesh. Drinking yogurt was used to sound like drinking blood. And the sound of children blinking was made by the skin of a grape rubbing against each other in almost blinking motion. <laughs> <laughs> We, we really need to replicate the noise of children <laughs> blinking. That was all true up until the children blinking, yeah? It's all true, apparently. I don't I don't understand the last one. What? Part. The sound of children... This is, this is what came off the website. The sound of children <laughs> blinking was made by the skin of a grape rubbing against each other in an almost blinking motion. Who are these, like, foley, foley artists? <laughs> like, it wasn't, what, what's, what's the job today? Well, can you can you recreate some children blinking? Well, I've got some kids here, and they're going to blink really close to the microphone. Done. No, it didn't quite sound good enough. Skin of a grape. <laughs> what on earth? That's like yeah, replic- weird. replicate the sound of a man breathing. It's a weird by... sort of uh, behind the scenes uh, team. You've got like the guy who, with a cat button on his Premiere Photoshop Pro, who can do cats real good. <laughs> We've got the guy who's got up some grapes and he says, that blinking's not loud enough. <laughs> <laughs> loud blinking. I've never seen someone go blink and gone, yeah. God, could have been louder. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, number so, four. Well, so that, was, that was all true. That it, was sounded all true. So, yeah. it, it sounded true until that bit at the end, yeah. which sounded like Absolute a, a, nonsense. A, con, a condorism. <laughs> it did, yeah. Okay, uh, number four. The cats in the attack scene were originally real cats that had to be replaced with CGI on account of a real one spraying up the walls and singing Everybody Wants to Be a Cat during every other oh, take. That's <laughs> sing. Uh, <laughs> you really draw me in with yeah. these. You draw me in. And like, part of me is like, I want these things to be real. That was false again, wasn't it? Yes. Okay, uh, so it was decided that Lena Leanderson, a voice she plays Eli, uh, should be replaced by a darker voice because the character of Eli was supposed to be an androgynous boy who'd been castrated. And Lee Anderson's voice was considered too delicate and feminine. So they like overdubbed her. Yeah, that's true, isn't it? That is true, yeah. True. Yeah, because um, we've also, because on the, on the uh, cast list, um, there's a list saying someone's her voice, and then there's another cast saying someone played aged Eli. Does it Obviously, have who played it, her, her eyelid at all? Um, it says Andy Pack Circus. Of... <laughs> <laughs> Andy Circus. Ate nothing but grapes for two. <laughs> Andy Circus, real method actor, ate Shame. nothing but grapes for two weeks. Yeah. Uh, in in the build up to playing Lean, 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 Eli's eyelids. He played the grape that made the noise for Eli's eyelids. Like... Yeah. So he had to be cut in half. He had to. Yeah. He had to experience being cut in half as a grape. Yeah. This is a, this. That's a really weird few sentences we just said. Yeah, Luke. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so um, <laughs> you need to grade the film. Yes. From the from the A's to the F's. So I'm gonna give this. We're gonna give this. I mean, judging by your past record, I'm gonna guess you're gonna give a B minus. Oh well, you think you know me, do you? You think you know just me that going well? Just by uh, Andy's. Uh, I did recently. I did just going by the spreadsheet. Don't judge me by a spreadsheet, Luke. <laughs> I'm more. Don't oh, put me in a box. A cell. Don't put me in a box and judge me as a spreadsheet, like yeah. you judged poor don't old put Virginia. Me in a column. <laughs> <laughs> don't put me in column A, column B. Get out of here, column. Don't judge me like you judged poor Virginia as a as a slut. That is just not on. I'm no, gonna give it this. Wasn't. It wasn't. A str- I'm gonna give this film a straight up A. I yeah. Uh, so I was gonna give it an A, 
and then I realised that I was, because of my <laughs> slut shaming, which which uh, shouldn't, I, I have no reason to do that. So I'm going to give it an A plus because what? of that. <laughs> no, I thought I, you were gonna... I'm actually going to give it an A plus. It's, I just think it's um, this one and the skin I live in. What grade did I give the skin I live in? Uh, have you um have you given anything an A plus so far? A... No. This is, this my is first the one. one. Have I given anything an A plus so far? No. The highest you've given is an is an A. You gave an A for Kill List and an A for the Blair Witch Project. Yeah. The highest I gave was an A minus, and I've given A minus quite a few times. Poltergeist, Skin I Live In, Drag Me to Hell. Oh, that's good. Uh, well, I gave an A minus to cat people. I don't think I just take that down a bit. Uh, a minus to cat people. You can't. Well. You can't go back on it. <laughs> uh, I, I changed you, that. To you're a really loving cat people that that weekend. Yeah, it must have been okay. Um, an A plus. I think this is my first A plus. I mean, this is uh, like a. I think this is also kind of overlooked as a horror film. Like this is the kind of film that if someone says oh, I don't like horror movies, I would play them this because yeah. it's so good. It's not. Yeah. It's it's not like it takes like general horror tropes that makes them real, and it has like an actual story, like an actual character relationship. And yeah, it's, it's this has been this is a fantastic <clears throat> film. Yeah, I highly recommend it. If you've if you listened to this podcast and ruined the film as we talk about every plot point meticulously. <laughs> oh yeah, the spoilers, by the way. Then we definitely. <laughs> I think we started. I think we maybe gave spoiler warnings once or twice in yeah. in this in this series. I think on like the tenth episode, and the, this is the twenty first episode or something. And at, and at the end of the twenty first episode, we gave a spoiler warning. So if you've got this far and been spoiled, <laughs> then you know that's a shame, and we're yeah. sorry. Yeah, sorry about that. But yeah, go and watch the film. You haven't seen it. Yeah. Because you get to see a lot of good stuff. I think I might want to watch it again. I might want to watch Let Me In next, just to sort of. Yeah, yeah. See I think I want changed. to watch that. Let, let, let Me In. Yeah. Uh, okay. and, let, and, and let me out. Or, well, let me <laughs> I'm stuck. Let me out. <laughs> I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so um, next week we are talking about The Innocents, which is a, like a black and white. I've never seen it. I don't know. Really have a clue what it's about. It's got a creepy looking kid on the front on the on the on the image. So we'll see what that's about. Um, and then after that, it's it follows, which I'm really looking forward to. <laughs> Ooh, it follows. Um, there's a film coming out soon as well called It Comes at Night with Joel Edgerton, um, is which this I believe is like uh, low budget but good films because he did a gift, the gift or something that's quite good as well. Yeah, yeah, the gift. Um, the gift was it? The gift? Yeah, it might have been the gift. Yeah, and you um, it was like a DVD. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have this. Looks, this looks pretty cool. So I think this comes out soon. So if we can get hold of it or somehow. Yeah. We should probably we might be able to do an episode on it because it looks good. This is like a there's a threat out in the woods and we're staying in this little shack and we can't leave the shack at night because there's a threat. Yeah, oh. we should do an honorary mention again at some point. Um, yeah, yeah. Maybe like the fly. I think that's like the highest rated in the group. Yeah, I think the fly and misery were two that aren't on the list. that might be a good shout to do. Apparently, but yeah, the, well, the misery book is a lot more gruesome than the uh, the film. Oh. Yeah, I want to read it at some point. We are um, we're smashing through this list, so let's let's do a few more, and then we'll do an honorary mention. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, so this show is brought to you by the Story Studio, Hawk and Cleaver. Head over to hawkandcleaver.com and grab a free book. Become a patron at patreoncom Cleaver. Join the Facebook group Horror Hangout Board of Advisors, where we talk about horror films. I think we've been talking about uh, favorite Clive Barker adaptations, uh, favorite. Uh, Jason films and like in what order and that kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, come and join the group there. Uh, thanks to Kovach Kalman for our theme music. Thanks to Acast for hosting the show. Thanks to the listeners. If you enjoy the show, please consider giving us a five star rating and reviewing iTunes. And remember to hit subscribe. Thanks to my co host Ben for being a real horror dude. Thanks. Thank you, Luke. You're also a real horror dude. A right horrible dude. Cool. Horror right. dude? I didn't, I didn't call you a horrible dude, mate. I would never do that. I would never call you a name just based on the way you look. <laughs> See ya.